Got another 9.3 quick fix video today on our 2003 Project 9.3. We're gonna be replacing the AMP-1. The AMP-1 can be a cause of a lot of common interior problems and electrical problems on these cars. This car, ever since we picked it up, has had a parasitic draw, which essentially means if you park the car for too long, the battery gets drained and dies. So it's obviously not a good thing. And the AMP-1 being bad is one of the uh, potential causes of that. On top of that, essentially nothing on the interior works in this car. Um, this interior is going to be getting a massive overhaul here in a video that you guys might have already seen, or if not, it will be coming out soon. But um, if I turn the key to the on position, first off, you'll see nothing from the AC vents. Not sure if this is related to the amp, but our sit up here does not work and our ICM2 does not work. We have no radio, no volume, anything. Another common thing, turn signals. You can hear they work, or you can see they work, excuse me, but they don't make any noise. We don't actually have a check engine light, by the way. That's just because the car is actually not running. So replacing the amp one really isn't too bad. It's just right under the driver's seat here. You can actually see it down right there. So all we gotta do is uh, remove the driver's seat and then it's a couple more bolts and no tech two work should be required with this job. Pretty easy to get the seat out from here. You just gotta like stick your foot under here cause there's hooks in the front and just kind of like wiggle it back like that. And then from there we just got the seat belt. Yeah, we got the seat belt down here. Just like an e-torque. Right, and then there's like a couple yeah. little plastic tabs. Right, little sensors on the bottom up. side. And we got our harness underneath here. One big harness right down in here. You just gotta kind of manhandle the seat yeah. while you there you go. Disconnect it. Pull that out. And she's officially free willy. Oh, there you go. Oh, she's nice and dirty. Oh yeah, got a little lunch down there. So there's one little Torx here holding our amp in. We're gonna have to excuse the crud that's under here. We uh, couldn't get under there when we went to the, sh the uh, car wash to vacuum. The little Torx, this will come up. We've got our connector back here. That's how easy that is. Potentially good amp. Yeah, so oh, that's pretty clean. Yeah, it's not perfect, but you know, hope it'll get the job done for us here. And plug her in. Don't have to marry it at all, right? No, we shouldn't need any Tech 2 work for this. And... All right, should we see cool. if anything works? We got the seat plugged in. Again, we're replacing all this with aero stuff, so that's why we're not going to fully reinstall it, but let's see. Hopefully something good happens here. Nothing. Should I turn the car on? Still not getting anything with the turn signals. We're not getting a click or anything like that with the turn signals. Huh. A little bit of an update here. This hasn't turned into a successful video I'd hoped, but we do have some good direction thanks to the help of Richard Ilbar, as always. So there's a special test that you can run on these if you do have a parasitic draw or stuff's not working like ours and it's called the uh, O-ring um, something test. I'll pull up the name here in a second, but I wanna show you guys the results here. So essentially what it does is because this is a fiber optic system, 03 to 06 have the fiber optic systems, essentially it'll send a signal to every single thing that's in that fiber optic system and it'll put an X where it stops receiving the signal or where the signal stops, I guess, or where there's a break in the signal. So. You can see right here it says ring break just before ICM. Consulted with Richard based off the instructions that it gives you before you run this test. Uh, 
that essentially means the ICM is dead. So that'll hopefully solve this issue, obviously, and then hopefully also the SID issue up here. Might also fix this, I don't know, but uh, I'll show you guys real quick how we ran this test. So if you go into, uh, you go all the way back, you pick your year, this is a 2003, 9-3, you go down to all, you go down to bus, and there's O bus ring brake test or position. So it gives you a bunch of instructions. You have to disconnect the battery, wait a couple minutes, reconnect the battery, wait again. And then here's those instructions that it gives you uh, on how to determine what's bad. So this is a very simple test, doesn't take very long, but once you're done, you can just hit enter to start the test and you'll see it'll run the test again for us. At least I assume it'll do the same thing again. And there you go. So that's a future problem we got to deal with is uh, ICM replacement. But nonetheless, uh, there is a very good chance that if you have a problem similar to this, the uh, AMP 1 could be your problem. So nonetheless, uh, good thing I got the warranty on this thing. We're just going to put the old one back in. I'm going to return this one to the junkyard. But hopefully you guys got something useful out of this video. I certainly learned something new that I didn't know before. Uh, Lucas and I, like I said, got a whole aero interior and some other parts like center console and stuff that we're going to be throwing in this car here right now. So you guys will see that video soon. Thank you guys all so much for watching. See you next time. Take it easy.